In this video we're going to look at how to use FDisk and DD to access an image file. Now I've got an image file here called disk.raw, which means it's a raw image file with no headers, it's just the raw data from the hard disk. And the first test is to try and identify what type of image file it is. Even though it's a raw file, they can still come in two types. So let's have a look at two of them. These are the two main types of raw file we can get. The first type is a direct raw file of the entire disk, so that means it contains the partition table at the beginning, followed by each of the partitions in turn. This is the main sort of raw image file you're likely to deal with as a forensic investigator because you've taken an image of the hard disk, and this is exactly what you're going to get. Uh, the alternative is the one, some of the ones that I've given you in the lab have been where the file is just the partition and nothing else. So I've literally taken the partition out of the disk and created a file with it and put the contents of the partition into the file. So the only thing contained in the file is the raw partition contents. Now the first thing you need to do is identify which type of file is the one that I've given you. Now in this case I've given you a file called fdisk.raw and the easy way to distinguish between them is to see if there's a partition table at the beginning of the file. And we can use the fdisk tool which looks at the partition table to see if it exists. If it doesn't exist it's going to give us an error message. If it does exist it's going to list the partition table out for us. So I'm going to write fdisk minus L for list partitions disk.raw and press enter. And it took a while because my hard disk had switched itself off. And it says yes there is a partition table. If there wasn't you would have got an error message here. And in this case there are two partitions. There's the first partition which appears to be an NTFS partition and a second partition which appears to be, the fat, uh, to be a, a Windows 95 FAT16 partition. So now you want to mount them and have a look at them. Well because this is an image file rather than a hard disk, we need to tell mount where in the file the partitions start so mount can actually mount them. Well, in this case, fdisk tells us where the partition starts. It starts at sector 63. Well, mount expects the offset within the file to be in bytes. Well, this is the sector offset. Sectors are 512 bytes long, so if we multiply this number by 512, we'll get the byte offset. So calculator, 63 times 512, that's our byte offset inside the file where the first partition starts. So let's try and mount it. Mount with the option start at offset equals this, disk.raw and then the mount point in this case I'm going to put in slash media slash temp and press enter. Now in this case I've got an error message, it says mount can't easily identify the file system. So in this case it's not necessarily a file system which mount recognises. Now this could happen for two reasons. First is clearly it's not a partition which mount recognises. The second condition is where we've specified the wrong offset. So we're looking at data which in fact isn't a partition. Well in this case I know for a fact that I've specified the right offset. So in this case mount doesn't recognise the file system. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. So let's have a look at the second partition. This is the offset in sectors. Let's multiply that by 512 to get the offset in bytes. Multiply by 512. That's our offset in bytes into the file where the partition starts. And we're going to try the mount command again with this offset. Now ideally it also specify the read only option as well so you maintain the integrity of the image. And mount succeeded in by the fact there's no errors. And if we look at the mount point, slash media, slash temp, you can see there's the contents of the partition and all the files that are contained in it. And in this case, it's just a few of my files. So, let's unmount that and go back and have a look at the other partition. Now, it said that the partition wasn't recognised. The so mount couldn't recognise that first partition. It's a very easy way to sort of try and figure out what's going on is to look at the very first sector of that partition. And to do that, we're going to use the dd command. Now DD you should be familiar with already, it does a sort of direct copy, we can specify what chunks of a file we want to extract and where we want to put it. And the common sort of parameters that DD expects are first of all the file in which we're going to take the data from, a block size, so whether we're working with sectors, whether we're working bytes, whether we're working with megabytes, it essentially specifies the units which we're working with. Where we want where in that file we want to take some data from, how much data we want to take, and where we're going to put it. So let's give you an example with taking this second partition. We're going to actually extract this partition from the 
image file and store it in a separate file. So this is relatively easy. DD input file equals disk.raw. The block size, well, we want to work with sectors, and um, sectors are 512 bytes long. We're going to skip over the first partition and start copying data from where this partition starts. So that's the sector offset. We're working with sectors, so we can put directly the sector number in. And then how much are we going to take? Well, in this case, this is the last partition of the file. I think it ends right at the end of the disk, so it doesn't matter too much. So I'm not going to specify count in here, which means it's just going to keep going until it reaches the end of the file. And then we need to specify an output file. And I'm going to say output second partition, partition.image. And press enter. And now that's going to copy the second partition out of this image and store it in a second file. This might take a few seconds, so I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. OK, now the command's completed. It says it's copied 270 megabytes from disk.raw and copied them, copied them into the file secondpartition.image. So let's have a look at our files, secondpartition.image. There it is, and that should be a direct copy of that second partition out of the image. And because it's just the partition, just the file system, that means we should be able to mount it without giving an offset. So mount second partition to slash media slash temp. It succeeds. And if I look in slash media slash temp, there's that partition that we were looking at earlier. So in this case, we've actually extracted the partition from the disk using DD. Now, let's go back and have a quick look at these partitions. So how does mount know that that's a fat partition? We haven't told it such. Well, it looks at the very first sector of the disk to try and identify. So let's have a look at the very first sector of this partition. And we can do that with DD. DD, start with the second partition. We're going to look at block size is of one sector and we're going to take one sector. So we're going to take the very first sector out of the image and we're going to pipe it into a hex editor. You might use Otaka, I'm going to use a command line one called HD. Those are the very first sectors. This is the boot sector from the partition. You can see there's lots of identifying information in there about what the image is. So let's try and have a look at that first partition then. We said this first partition um, mount couldn't identify what the file system was. So we're going to take the very first sector of this partition out and look at it in a hex editor and see if there's any identifying information. So we know it starts at sector 63 and we want to take one sector. So dd if disk.raw, so take it from there, work in multiples of 512 sectors, skip over the first 63 sectors and take one sector from that position and then we're going to pipe it through HD and see what happens. Well, in this case, there's no identifying information here. It looks more or less completely random. If you look at all these bytes, there's no sort of identifying strings of text here. Well, we know that data that's completely random is encrypted, so we can test this data to see if it's random by running through the end tool. But we need a bit more data than one sector. So let's say we're going to take uh, a thousand sectors. So that's almost a thousand times 512 bytes. Now we can pipe that through HD, there's all the sectors coming out, one after the other. We don't really want to run it through a hex editor, we want to run it through the ENT tool to measure, measure the entropy and see whether it's encrypted. In this case it says there's 7.99 bits per byte of entropy, which means it's almost completely random. So in fact this partition appears to be random. Why might it be random? It could be random because the partition is encrypted, or it could be random because the partition has been erased. Now, the only way we can know whether it's encrypted or not is if we can work out the password and which software it's been encrypted with. If it's been encrypted with TrueCrypt, then we can just DD out the partition, much like we did with that second partition, and then open it with TrueCrypt if we can work out what the password is. But as I say, we can only do that if we know what the password is. So that's a quick overview of how to use DD and mount to mount partitions, extract partitions from the disk, and work and process them and look at different parts of it.